Cervical Spine Nerve Root Examination Neck pain and shoulder pain or referred pain to the scapula may overlap. Shoulder pain tends to be located on the posterolateral aspect of the deltoid muscle. Neck pain tends to be localized over the trapezius muscle and may radiate to the upper extremity. The combination of shoulder pain and neck pain pathology is not uncommon. Radicular pain from irritation of a nerve root in the cervical spine is associated with parathesia, numbness, or weakness in the dermatomal distribution. So let's examine the cervical spine nerve roots. So if you have a herniated disc between C4 and C5, that will affect C5 nerve root. You will know if a nerve is injured or not by looking at three things, the motor function, the sensory function, and the reflex. So when we talk about C5 nerve root, let's talk about the motor function, shoulder abduction, and elbow flexion. The deltoid is C5 nerve root. So we're talking about shoulder abduction. The deltoid is C5 nerve root. The biceps is C5 nerve root. How about the sensation? Sensation around the shoulder area. How about the reflexes? The biceps reflex is primarily C5. If we go to a herniated disc between C5 and C6, that will affect C6 nerve root. The motor function is elbow flexion and wrist extension. The extensor carbi radialis longus and brevis. You can see the sensation of C6 dermatome is at the thumb and the index finger. Reflexes. Brachioradialis reflex is C6. So let's take a herniated disc between C6 and C7. It will affect C7 nerve root. C7 motor function will be an elbow extension, wrist flexion, and finger extension. The triceps is C7 for elbow extension. The wrist flexors is C7, and the finger extensors is C7. So give you like seven, wrist flexion and finger extension. And the sensory C7 is the middle finger. So if you see in the exam, sensation of the middle finger is affected, that is C7. So the disc is herniated between C6 and C7 level. The reflexes of C7 is the triceps reflex. Herniated disc between C7 and T1, that will affect C8 nerve root. Motor function C8 is finger flexion. C8 finger flexion from the flexo digitorum superficialis and profundus. The sensory C8 is for the little finger, the ring finger, and the honor part of the forearm, as you can see here. This is a safe way to remember the sensation of the cervical nerve roots. C5 sensation is around the shoulder area. C6 will be the thumb area. The middle finger will be C7. The little finger will be C8. How about a disc herniation between T1 and T2? A disc herniation between T1 and T2 
will affect T1 nerve root. The motor involved will be abduction and abduction of the fingers. And you can see the areas of sensation of T1 is around the medial aspect of the elbow. This is a chart summarizing the nerve root and the important nerve function of every nerve root. There are also tests for cervical reticulopathy. The Sperling's test is used to assess nerve root pain and irritation. The patient should be seated with the head turned towards the affected side and the clinician is standing behind the patient. Downward compressive force to the top of the patient's head is applied. The test is positive when the compressive force being placed on the cervical spine causes radiating pain down the patient's arm. How about shoulder abduction test? The patient's symptoms are relieved by the shoulder abduction by placing the hand over the head. This test helps to differentiate between cervical spine pathology and other causes of shoulder pain. It is an important test for cervical radicular compressive diseases. Relief of the symptoms with shoulder abduction test occurs due to decreased tension on the nerve roots. And if you have relief of the pain with this test, then it is a nerve root irritation and not a shoulder pathology. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.